first album I ever bought on my own was the Psychedelic Furs. I was on a European vacation with my father and they bought uh, the Psychedelic Furs one with uh, Heaven on it. So, is that what it's called, Heaven? I hope so. It was great. And then I bought Head on the Door by The Cure. I remember those were the first two that year I bought. Well, those were all very, very different transitions. Tinker to Hole was the biggest leap I will have ever taken, mainly because I left my hometown of Montreal and left Canada and left my, my best friend Steve to join Hole, which was at that time a bunch of strangers um, to travel the world with. But uh, so that was the, you know, once I made that leap, all these other transitions have been easy as anything. It was very natural for me to move into the Smashing Pumpkins because they were my old friends and my favorite band, and it was appealing to the 19-year-old girl who had the dream of being in Smashing Pumpkins years and years ago, so that was easy. The transition into the Chelsea, basically the Chelsea existed for five days and it was fun with three girlfriends and we were rehearsed for three days and played one show and that was that, so that was not very difficult. Hand of Doom was a one-off thing where I got together with friends in New York and decided that I wanted to develop as a lead singer, so I used Ozzy as my teacher and learned eight Sabbath songs and played about four shows, or seven shows, I think, and we recorded one live album. So that wasn't a massive leap or anything, but it was an integral part of me finding the confidence to sing lead vocals. So I'd say the next huge leap would be integrating into my solo project. That's going to be a very, very big, thank God I've had about a year of slowly moving into that and making my record and producing the record and putting a band together has given me a lot of a lot of uh, experience so far, you know, I've only played two shows with uh, my solo project. This summer I'll be starting to play shows and I'm nervous because I don't have much experience being a band leader and a uh, front person. So I am nervous about that and we'll see how that goes in the year 2003 and 2004. Um, oh, do I feel any pressure to live up to expectations? No, I just feel pressure from myself to be very, very, very hardworking and honest and uh, uh, not afraid. I have expectations to have no fear. Yes, I have very high expectations on that and have no answer to about myself, so I'm not too concerned. Okay.
ceiling, come on, I need it louder than bombs. The idea of the Virgins came um, when both uh, Ryan Adams and I were living in the Chelsea Hotel, um, and I had met Ryan through James Eha. James Eha had worked with Whiskey Town and was a big Ryan fan. And uh, simultaneously, I ran into Evan Dando, who I'm very old friends with and love his music. And I introduced Ryan and Evan to each other because they had never met, and they in fact reminded me a lot of each other. And uh, and one night sort of like brought them together in my, um, my Chelsea apartment and uh, basically uh, basically we came up, you know, at three in the morning thought, let's make a band together. Let's go into James' studio, because James has a studio in New York City. Go into the studio for 10 days and make an album. And uh, it almost happened. Like I think uh, Ryan's record label was kind of putting the budget together and everything, we almost did it and then Ryan blew up and went on tour for a year and a half and, and Evan, I hadn't spoken to him in a while either and James got busy and I started making my album so it just dwindled but I really, really hope to do it one day. I really, I think that the four of us would have very an uh, interesting four-way collaboration because we've all got different things to offer and I really, really hope it happens but so nothing ever came of it, hope it will.